Bhagavatam, which is our means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashta Praesha Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavad Yuttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki By regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service to the pure devotee, all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil. And loving devotion to the Supreme Lord who is glorified in transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya On this 30th day of December 2020 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We're in Canal 4, The Creation of the Fourth Order, Chapter 28, Paranjan Becomes a Woman in the Next Life, Text Number 45. Ajanati Priyatamam Ajanati Priyatamam Yado Padatamangana Yado Padatamangana Sustirasana Masadya Sustirasana Masadya Yata Puva Mapacharat Yata Puva Mapacharat Ajanati Priyatamam Yado Padatamangana Sustadasana Masadya Yata Puva Mupacharat Janati Priyatamam Yado Padatamangana Sustadasana Masadya Yata Puva Mupacharat Ajanati Priyatamam Yado Padatamangana Sustadasana Masadya Yata Puva Mupacharat Ajanati Priyatamam Yado Padatamangana Sustadasana Masadya Yata Puva Mupacharat Ajanati Priyatamam Yodo Padatamangana Sustadasana Masadya Yata Puva Mupacharat Ajanati Priyatamam Yodo Padatamangana Sustadasana Masadya Yata Puva Mupacharat Ajanati Priyatamam Yado Padatam Angana Sustadasana Masadya Yata Puva Mupacharat Ajanati Without any knowledge Priyatamam Her dear most husband Yada when Upadatam passed away. Angana, the woman. Sustida, fixed up. Asanam, on the seat. Asadya, going up to. Yata, as. Puravam, before. Upacharat, went on serving him. Translation, the daughter of King Vidarbha continued as usual to serve her husband, who was seated in a steady posture until she could ascertain that he had passed away from the body. 
purport. It appears that the queen did not even talk to her husband while serving. She would simply perform her prescribed duties without talk. Thus she did not stop rendering service until she could ascertain that her husband had passed from the body. I'll go on. Yada no palabedhan grav ushmanam patur archati asit sam vigna vidya yuta brashta mrigiyata. While she was serving her husband by massaging his legs, she could feel that his feet were no longer warm and could thus understand that he had passed, that they had already passed from the body. She felt great anxiety upon being left alone. Bereft of her husband's company, she felt exactly as the deer feels upon being separated from its mate. Purport. As soon as the circulation of blood and air within the body stops, it is to be understood that the soul within the body has left. The stoppage of the body's circulation is perceived when the hands and feet lose heat. One tests whether a body is alive or not by feeling the heart's palpitations and the coldness of the feet and hands. Text 47. Atmanam shochati dinam abandham viklava shubihi stanav asitche vipine susvaram prarurodha sa Being now alone and a widow in that forest, the daughter of Vidarbha began to lament, incessantly shedding tears which soaked her breasts and crying very loudly. Purport. Figuratively, the queen is supposed to be the disciple of the king. Thus, when the mortal body of the spiritual master expires, his disciples should cry exactly as the queen cries when the king leave, leaves his body. However, the disciple and spiritual master are never separated, because the spiritual master always keeps company with the disciple as long as the disciple follows strictly the instructions of the spiritual master. This is called the association of vani, or words. Physical presence is called vapuhu. As long as the spiritual master is physically present, the disciple should serve the physical body of the spiritual master. And when the spiritual master is no longer physically existing, the disciple should serve the instructions of the spiritual master. Om jnana timurandasya jnanandana shalakaya chukshu unmiditam mena tasmai shri gurave namaha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master Shri Prabhupada opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto him and to all members of Sri Parampara. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to um, meditate on the different aspects of the spiritual master and relationship with the disciple and disciples. And so, first a little bit about this purpose, then we're going to go over the song that we sing every morning, Shri Guru Chodana Padma, and really meditate on each line. So first of all, it's amazing pastime. This daughter of uh, Vidarbha, Vidarbi, has been serving Malaya Dvaja, who retired from it's kingship. Now you can imagine the contrast. He's a king, so he's living in a palace, he's living his opulent life, serv- you know, being served by so many servants and so forth. And uh, then, being a great devotee, he retires from the, from the kingship and to, perfect, to perform severe austerities. We find this again and again in the, in the Bhagavatam. The great kings uh, retire at a certain point, mostly in old age, but sometimes in young age, like Bharat is, a, is exceptional. You know, he just gave up his young wife and everything, just a very powerful verse. This is one who gives up stool after passing it. Uh, but in any case, the, 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 the kings who are really Rajarshis, they're also called Naradevas, which means uh, God, God-like men. They're, they're meant to be representatives of God on earth to, to, to uh, uh, rule the kingdom uh, according to the, strictly according to the rules of Shastra. So Rajarshis or kings were also Rishi's great sages. So Maliyadvaja was one of them, and he gave up his kingdom, went to the forest, performed severe austerities. His wife followed him, and uh, she's simply serving him like before, but in much different circumstances. Now, you remember how long he was meditating here? 36,000 years. That's a long time. She's serving him that whole time. And uh, he's becoming more and more advanced until he's finally at a state of full self-realization. And he's just sitting there, and finally he gives up the body. She can't even tell, because they weren't even uh, conversing, apparently. She was silently performing her duties. 
an incredible sign of <coughs> faithfulness of a wife. It reminds me of like Gandhari, who also went out. She was known. Uh, Dhritarashtra was her husband. So he was blind from birth. And um, so when she was married to him, she didn't blind her herself, but she blindfolded herself permanently so she couldn't see. So very powerful. That chastity gave her tremendous power. So finally, this now we have this point where the king uh, leaves his body, and she can only tell because they're not speaking together that by the by the temperature suddenly his body's grown cold. So then Prabhupada talks about uh, the, the 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 that that point. Then there should be a the, the spirit. The disciples should cry out and and shed tears because of the separation of the spiritual matter. When, when Prabhupada left his body, all the disciples, you know, were, were bereft and everyone is crying. Uh, but Prabhupada had prepared us, and there's several purports in this fourth canto about the Vani and the Vapu. We all learned that, Vani and Vapu. Vani is the words, and Vapu is the physical body. So when the, phys when the spiritual master is present, you have both, actually. You have the, the, the opportunity to see the, the personality, the, 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 the person, and to interact and to serve, of course, uh, the, the spiritual master personally. And that should be done as far as possible, Physics, personal needs and whatever else. But the most important service, which Prabhupada explains in one purport in the first canto, is the hearing. That's, that's, it's not that that's not service, that's the most important service, that's the first service. To hear with great attention. There's a wonderful pastime where Prabhupada is uh, in, in a, um, his, his spiritual master had come, I think they were on pilgrimage in Vrindavan. And uh, there was, you know, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarvas was speaking and he would speak for a long time, you know, in very, in very exalted topics that sometimes Prabhupada said it was hard to understand. So there was some talk that there's this other temple they were going to go see of Chiradakshay Vishnu or something like that. And many devotees went to see that. The Prabhupada stayed. He wasn't alone, but uh, the, I think the minority of the, of, the, of the disciples stayed there, in you know just to hear him. Even though Prabhupada said at that point there was a lot of things he couldn't understand, but uh, later on, back to Sanda, what it was, I think when it was suggested that, that this uh, by Charan should get, get initiations, yes, I have marked him. He likes to hear. So that's the first and most important service is to hear with great attention and with this attitude of shu shu sho, this is a very important word, comes in right near the beginning of Bhagavatam's second verse. Shu shu sho means, Prabhupada defined it in two descriptions. One is ardent hearing, and the other is submissive oral reception. It's a very pregnant phrase, submissive oral reception. So you're receiving the knowledge, and you're, you're, you're not, the mind isn't creating all kinds of, first of all, you're very attentive to every word, and it's not like you're thinking, well, that's right, that's wrong, that's right, that's, you know, I don't, I don't know about that one, you know what I mean? It's just that you're receiving it as it is, and because it's straight from Shastra. You're, you're, the words are coming down unchanged, and that's a key element of the parampara and genuine acharyas, is that they, they're uh, a probably good transferred, transparent via media, you would call it. It would be a transparent medium, media through which the, uh, the actual uh, Chabda Brahma can, can be uh, received and transmitted and received. So, the words of the spiritual master. Now, in days gone by, there were no books, you know, so the disciples would, would memorize everything. Like Sudha Goswami, he heard the, the, the Srimad Bhagavatam when first spoken by Shukadeva Goswami on the banks of the Ganges to Maharaj Bhagavad. And he memorized all the words, all the verses, just by hearing. So he was able to repeat that later at, 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 to the sages at Naimasharanya, which is mostly what we're hearing here. So, uh, the, the key point in this little uh, purport, that the third purport here, is that uh, we can always associate. You can't always associate with the personal form of the spiritual master. Of course, we have these wonderful murtis and we can do that, but it's, you know, it's not exactly the same. But uh, you can always associate with the words by hearing, by memorizing, by discussing, and most, most importantly, by following by following the instructions. And that the, uh, intimate uh, association uh, keeps you bound up uh, to the spiritual master. And the, so many disciples, uh, unfortunately I'm not one of them, have had, you know, years later, Prabhupada is coming in dreams, which he said is important, that's you know, significant, and giving instruction that way. And uh, you, you feel the, 
the presence and the blessings and the protection of the spiritual master by following the word, by hearing and by following. And so I wanted to go through this song because that in the first, in the second verse here, it exactly talks about that. It's Guru Mukha Purna Bhakti Chichate Aika. And the Prabhupada s- singled out that line once in a, in a talk I heard he given. and he was really focusing on that one line. But just to go through this, because actually the translation we have, although we suggested that one thing, <laughs> is there's a, there's a few deficiencies in it. So we're going to go through carefully here. First of all, Shri Guru Charada Padma, the lotus feet of, this, of the Guru, of the spiritual master, Kevala Bhakati Sadma, uh, the abode, Sadma, of Kevala Bhakti about pure devotion. So right away, th- there's that, that, that injunction. Uh, there's no other way. You know, remember the story, the, the past, past time of Pallad. He's giving his father instructions. in several instances like that, like that. And each time, the father becomes more and more enraged. So uh, th- there's the set that's very famous, which has the verse ending, Punak punas charvata charvananam. This is a really nice phrase to learn. Again and again, chewing the chewed. This is the nature of material life. So I won't go through all the Sanskrit, but he's telling his father there that someone who is uh, taking a vow, more or less, is completely, 100% committed to try to enjoy material life, material family life, uh, griha vadanam, and, and whose senses are therefore out of control, adanta uh cannot become Krishna conscious, cannot place the mind on Krishna and keep it there. Whether he meets in a, you know, comes into an association of devotees or he tries on his own or any other way. If your mind is fixed on sense gratification and you're committed to it, then that, you, you don't get the blessings from Krishna within to be able to focus on him. It doesn't work that way. So, uh, then he describes, this verse is most quoted of the three, uh, is in, uh, they, they who are like that, they have no idea that the ultimate goal of their life is Vishnu. Svaarta, the goal of the soul. This arta can also mean money, external goals that you have, but when the goal of the soul, the real goal, is Vishnu and nothing else. They have no idea. And so they're absorbed in external goals, unlimited this money, that money, that position, this fame, this woman, this man, the whole thing. So there's durashaya uh, bahirata uh, manina. Impossible to attain these, really, and they never meet your expectation. Bahirata manina. Mind is absorbed in these. And in this uh, darkness of ignorance, anda, they're blinded to the real truth. Anda yatandai rupani yamana. Uh, they're, they're, they're led in these ideas by other blind people. It's the culture of ignorance, you know? Uh, and therefore, everyone falls into a ditch. They keep, and they and tapi shatantam, they remain bound up tightly to, uh, by the modes of nature. Now, the third verse deals with this. Naishamatistavadurukamangangspishitjanatabhagamoyadarta. One cannot touch one's mind to the lotus feet of the Lord, and, and which is the greatest arta, the greatest goal in life, which gets rid of all your unartas. Naishamatis Tavut Urukramangring, Urukramangring is the lotus feet of Urukram Krishna. Sprishati, touch. Prishati, anarta bigamo, yadarta. You see, anarta bigamo, which removes all anartas, and which is the greatest value. And that is the greatest arta. That's a nice play in words. Until what? Until you bathe yourself in the dust of the lotus feet of pure devotee. In other words, this approach of Krishna's representative. Krishna doesn't allow you to just, you know, approach him personally. He wants to, you to, to, to uh, approach through his dear representatives so that you can be trained, so that you can learn humility, so that you can become a devotee. So that's uh, why the lotus feet of the spiritual master are the, are the uh, abode of pure devotion. I bow down to them with great uh, uh, attention. That's the word, savadana. Now that word attention is, is important. What does it mean? I think what it mostly it means, I, I think, is that when we bow down, we're supposed to say the mantra, right? The Mahon Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pasaya and or the mantra to your initiating guru can also, should also be said. But when you're bowing down, think of the meaning of, of, of all of that. The Mahon Vishnu Padaya. Now Vishnu Padaya, that is, uh, there's, a, there's a meaning to that 
that we don't often understand. I, I think I heard this from Bhakti Vikas Swami. Because we all say, uh, right? We also say that, when it's this, especially when it's this appearance day, disappearance. So that Vishnu Padaya means th taking the position of Vishnu in this world. Padaya means a, a position. And that's very important, because that's exactly why approach and service and listening to him is like equivalent to listening to Krishna and serving Krishna. That's Sakshad that it vain So, uh, so with great attention, the meaning of the, of the bowing down, the position that I'm offering myself, my, this mind, body, and words belongs to you. You, you can, you know, that's what this means. I, 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 met, I explained that once before from the Padma Puran. Uh, by the by, the mercy, oh, oh brothers, this is by you know, oh brothers, by the mercy of the spiritual master, one can cross over the material the, the, or, or birth and death. Now you notice this. This is a common thing. You know, the benefits of bhakti is uh, it's this and this and that. The first thing, the first benefit is relief of the miseries of the world, of of, of material life, ultimately crossing completely over the you know, birth and death. But the final goal, the real goal, is Krishna, Krishna prapti, attaining Krishna, attaining love for Krishna, uh, is by, the, by the means of this approach to the spiritual master. Now the next verse especially deals with these words, and I'd like to focus on that. Guru, Mukha, Padma, Vakya, Chitete, Kodiya, Aikya. So he's still speaking to the Bhai. This is the, what was missed in the first translation, is that Nartam Das Thakur is, is speaking to us, Oh brothers, do this. It's, this is what you should do. Guru Mukha Padma Vakya, the words emanating from the lotus mouth, Mukha, of the Guru. Now, one little note on Sanskrit, which is, you might put it in your memory bank there in the future. There's three words, common words for face, and all three of those words also mean mouth. Because the mouth is the most important part of the, 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 the face, really. It's the part where you speak, you know, that's what, especially in relating to a spiritual master. So, Guru Mukha, from the mouth of the, of the spiritual master, of the lotus mouth, these words are coming. Chiti te kodeya aika, make your consciousness one with them. In other words, focus very carefully. And what are those words? We're, we're, we're distributing them. The whole idea is we're giving people a chance, even in their united state, to uh, receive the words of the pure devotee. And if they're fortunate, they'll read them with some interest, and they'll enter into the heart and you know, it'll create a revolution, or at least create more interest, and so they'll pursue it more, you know. So, but we ourselves are meant to be steeped in those words. Understand them, talk about them, glorify them together, and uh, follow them, follow the instructions, and uh, become inspired and purified. So then, you know, in other words, listen very carefully, meditate on them. If you don't understand, discuss them like that. And then, arnakadiyamaniyashi, don't desire any other words. That's, that's the, you know, very important. Listen very carefully to these words, meditate on them, and don't desire any others. The, then, this, uh, the next line is very, uh, all of these lines are very important. Shiguru charane rati, attachment for the lotus feet of the guru. In other words, developing real love and affection for the guru. What, in Srila Prabhupada, he came to America, you know, risked his life numerous times for us, just to save us, not to make money, get fame, or anything else. He wasn't coming to sell books, you know. He was coming <laughs> to, to, to give what the absolute essential medicine, just like this, this pandemic, right? They're racing and racing and spending millions of dollars to make the vaccine, right? That, you know, with, with the idea of, well, this will cure, you know, uh, prevent millions of people from getting sick. It's essential. So, but it's, a, it's illusory, you know, ultimately even if they get a vaccine to protect the body, the, the le disease of birth and death is going on. The real vaccine is, is what Srila Prabhupada gave us, what is coming down through the parampara from Krishna originally, the holy name, the pastime, the form, the deities, this whole movement, and especially the words, because the words can transform our consciousness so that we can become uh, fixed up. So. So the, who, who wouldn't be attracted to such a person? You know, if someone loves you, automatically there's an attraction there. This is the only attraction for Krishna, is our love for him. <laughs> He's not, you know. And all of, the, all of what we do is a, is a means, even in our material state, to express that love. It may not even be there. 
yet. But by chanting and hearing and doing what we're doing, the natural love awakens by purification. That's the key. It's already there. It's just buried. Nitya Siddha Krishna, Prema, Sadhya Gabunoi, Shavanadi Shuddha Chitte, Kodaya Yodoi. Very important instruction of Lord Chaitanya. Uh, the eternal perfection of love of God is always with the living entity. It's not something that can be brought from outside. It's not something artificial. By the process of bhakti, beginning with and chiefly, you know, uh, uh, consisting of hearing and chanting, shravanadi, hearing and adi is etc. means chanting etc. Shuddha chitte, purification of the consciousness takes place, kodaya hudoi, and it, it awakens, manifests. So, so a very important manifestation of that attraction for Krishna is attraction for his dearest representative. So that shigura chadana rati, attachment for the lotus feet of the spiritual master, ese uttamagati. That is the, 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 the best and most efficient means of advancement. But because the, just see how it works. If, if you really love someone and you appreciate them, then naturally if they ask you to do something, say, yeah, sure. You know, I'll do it. So that, that, th and what is he going to ask you to do? Only those things that will help you Krishna consciousness. You know what I'm saying? Which may, 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 may and will certainly be against our natural conditioned state of things that we want to do. But that's what surrender is all about. Surrender means that that what what this, this exalted person who has my best interest is hard and is giving and giving me all this good instruction is is now t telling me no do this don't do that. Now the question is how far I'm going to follow that. To that degree we follow that those instructions then we're surrendered, and within that that surrender everything comes because all the activity is is, is located there. Read my books. I was just reading uh, a, a, a something from a Vyas Puja offering. How Prabhupada was was uh, in instructing the, the 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 devotees to read my books every day carefully, and that is the. Uh, uh, oh no! Yeah, <laughs> I think it was in this context because I was. I'm always dealing with these questions. The people are writing me questions. Is this really correct? What does this mean? Does anyone remember King Maruta? Maybe not. <laughs> Prabhupada, is in the first canon, he goes through sometimes his verses just, you know, with many names, and he'll go through each one and give a little portrait. So this King Maruta, uh, I started being, doing research. I got two involved in it from Mahabharata. You know King Maruta. And he, uh, he, was, he, he, he was a uh, disciple of Bahaspati, then Bahaspati rejected him, and so he took shelter of Bahaspati's brother. And... Uh, uh, he, he, he was worshipping Shiva with the Shiva Yajna and he got access to a, a, a mountain of gold. It's in the context of after the war there was no money and so Yudhishthira was sending the, the, his brothers out to get funds to, do, to perform an expensive sacrifice. Not the Rajasuya, but the, I asked me, made a Yajna. So, so uh, one of the brothers, I forget which maybe is Arjuna, he went up to this he knew that there were all this mountain where all the gold was. I think it came up. You know, the Brahmins were making the, uh, uh, utensils out of gold, but there was so much gold they were just leaving them aside. So that was first from King Ruta. He got access to this gold mountain. So then, fast forward five thousand years, and you get one of Prabhupada's disciples who read the, pa the pastime. We read the, the the purport. He said, Prabhupada, can you tell me where that mountain of gold is? And Prabhupada said, why, why is that? He says, I'm gonna, I'll go there with a rucksack, a back, backpack, and I'll climb up there and just knock off you know, a rucksack's worth of gold, which is worth, like at that time, probably $400 an ounce or something, whatever it was. And uh, you know, we'll be able to spend it on the temple. And Prabhupada said, forget about that. He said, no, I won't tell you. And I said, why not? He said, because it, 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 it won't look well. You know that, it, and so forth, and and it's not necessary anyway. Better you put your energies into making devotees; they're more valuable than gold. <laughs> and then you train them up by making sure they read every day and they understand the philosophy and they become well versed. And so that's what Dhananjaya did. This is one of the early, early UK devotees, you know, working with making devotees. So uh, it, it, it all boils down to that: uh, getting attraction for the guru. Not you know, Srila Prabhupada, who's our, all about, when I say, uh, our, our, uh, who, our guru, when I, every morning, when I, when I say that, I'm not just talking about me, who happened to be, you know, his initiated disciple, but we're all, all his disciples. Disciple doesn't just mean initiated disciple. 
It means someone who follows the philosophy of someone. You can be a disciple of Socrates and everything, you know. But uh, the point is that through the parampara, if we're following Prabhupada's instructions, he's also the shiksha guru. That's why it's so important to read the first chapter of the CC. It's all about the gurus. There's a lot of other stuff in there, but there's a big, uh, uh, a big section there about the, the different kinds of gurus. The initiating guru, the shiksha guru, even the vartman badarshika guru is mentioned there. I mean, the one who first shows you the way, the one who first gives you a book, <laughs> you're kind of guru there. You know, you're, you're guiding people to come to Krishna. They may not take the guidance, but that's your role. <coughs> so Srila Prabhupada is the eternal sh uh, primary shiksha guru for every devotee who takes shelter in Iskan. Everything we're doing here is all part of, you know, part of his instruction. The books are his instruction. He was following his disciples. So uh, he's all of our gurus. And therefore, you know, getting a, a, a attraction for him that we have so many nice books about him and videos and remembrances and things, and all of this can help help us to establish uh, a, a affectionate relationship for him, which will help us uh, on the path. Now, going on, just to finish this this uh, song, Choco Dan Dilo Ye, he's given us our eyes. In other words, I remember the verse from Pallad, Andai Yatandar, blinded. By the, by the modes of nature, one is, is acting in a way that's detrimental to himself and others. Life after life, birth after birth, so many species. But the spiritual master comes and gives us our eyes to see. Just like they had this, this uh, uh, Shastra Chakshus idea, to see through the eyes of Shastra. There's so many passages when we're reading our Bhagavad Gita class where we find one, who's, one who sees, you know, Tattvadarshi, one who's actually seen the truth, we can get n knowledge from him, real knowledge. And from that knowledge, we will also see ev that ev all the living entities are part and parcel of Krishna. You see? So your vision changes. So he gives us our transcendental eyes where we can see ourselves uh, differently, see everyone else, see this world, and finally see Krishna. So, so that, uh, having given us those eyes, he's our Lord birth after birth. To recognize that, okay, we may come back, we may not be pure, but we'll still have some relationship with that same personality because he's non-different from Krishna. Dibya Gyan. Now here's, here's where the translation that we yeah, deviates in an important way. So, Dibya Gyan Ride Prokashito. By his words, by his training, by uh, he, uh, channeling Krishna, Dibya uh, Gyan Ride Prokashito is manifesting in our hearts transcendental knowledge. From which, prema bhakti yaha hoite. That idea is not coming out in our present translation we recite. From that knowledge, I, I cleared this many years ago with uh, uh, Bhakti Chiruswami, I asked him about Bengali. Yes, that's the grammar. So the prema bhakti yaha hoite, from, from that uh, transcendental knowledge is coming the prema bhakti because we know how to act. We know who we are. And if we follow the, the knowledge that's being given, the prema bhakti will manifest, will ar arise. And not only is that manifesting, but a vidya is being destroyed. The ignorance is being destroyed. And, the, and, and then it goes, Vedega Yahara Chirito, then all of the, the uh, scriptures are singing his glories, all the Vedas. And finally, Shiguru Karuna Sindhu, an ocean of mercy. Another, another reason when we realize uh, you know, what Prabhupada has given us and our, our spiritual master, uh, so much sacrifice out of compassion, an ocean of compassion. Adama Janara Bandhu, the friend of all the fallen. We should uh, realize how fallen we are, but he's a friend. Not turning away, not ignoring. Lokanat Lokade Jivana. Now, this line is written uh, by Narutam Nar Dastaku, who's a spiritual master, is Lokanat Goswami. And so that's what he's writing there. It also has a generic name, which uh, master, what is it? Um, Teacher and life of all the people, Lokita Jivana. But that's why I think Prabhupada Lokita Jivana, that Prabhupada is the life and soul of all of, 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 of the people, you know, spiritually. Then the call, Haha Prabhu Korodaya, please show me mercy. Alas, alas, uh, give me the, sh the shade of your lotus feet, shelter of your lotus feet. Eba Yasha Gushak Tribhuvana, that uh, your, your uh, glories are sung throughout the three worlds. So there's also at least one more verse of this song. You know that, right? I don't know if you know that, because uh, Prabhupada never gave us that, but uh, someone pointed that out, and I realized, yeah, actually, they sign these songs. Bhakati Vinod Ashray, right? 
they sign these songs by putting their name in at the, at the, at the last line, but this one isn't signed. There's no Naratan. So there's a couple other lines, but Prabhupada didn't get it. I, don't, I, I don't remember seeing them. So the point is, back to the, the lesson here, is that this relationship be, uh, between the spiritual master and the disciple, this is the life and soul. This is, this is the substance of our uh, progress in devotional life, is to, is to, is to uh, cherish that relationship by maintaining the proper attitude and performing uh, our activities in such a way that it deepens that relationship. And by doing that, uh, as in everything uh, advancing a Krishna consciousness, you find yourself less and less entangled, less and less, uh, uh, what should I say, the vegas. We were talking about these last night, the urges, you know, of, of the senses and the mind uh, become less. Maya gives up a grip on you and it becomes uh, uh, more and more practical and, and easier to practice devotional service. So the key is the word vani, the words. And there's a, we have an unlimited number of words to be uh, uh, absorbed in. I was just reading the Chaitanya Charitamrita again. First chapter, such a rich chapter. At the end of the chapter, near the end of the chapter, Krishna's Kaviraj is quoting the Chatur Shloki, four main verses of the Bhagavatam. And there's so much wonderful instruction there. Recently, I was asked to, to help in a project to uh, create like the essence of the essence of the philosophy that everyone could get and memorize and you know study. And Bhakti Bhidhan Swami is, is preparing that on the basis of this Chatur Shloki and Prabhupada's explanation of it in its first chapter of the CC. So the, the you know this is should be the 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 um, the substance you know it should form the, the basis and the substance of our understanding and our uh, uh, of our of uh, ourselves and Krishna and the relationship and it's and, and it it, it uh, nourishes our faith that faith is so important because the faith is the foundation adau shraddha tataksaro sangha so the faith in what faith in Krishna faith in the words here faith in the process. And also the faith that Krishna is so powerful, and so you know that even I can be empowered to follow this process, because that's a subtle form of, that Maya gets you. You know, I certainly believe in, in, in Prabhupada. I exalt him the highest. You know, people will say, and and uh, everything about Krishna consciousness is true. And I, I I spent so many months, you know, or, or maybe years, uh, following it, trying to follow, but I'm just too fallen. I'm just too fallen. There's no way that I can, you know, follow everything, and so I can't associate with devotees. You know, and as soon as you stop associating with devotees and put yourself out there thinking, "Well, I'll do this, do it on my own," no, you won't. There's no way. Even with all of the zooms and all of the internet and everything, you have to have association with devotees. And so, what that is is a lack of faith. Krishna is omnipotent. Well, if he's omnipotent, omnipotent, uh, he can even empower me. You know, why not? And so many examples of outcasts and, you know, an elephant goes back to Godhead. And why not? So, so that, you know, it's a, it's a lack of faith. Therefore, uh, uh, proper hearing and chanting and discussing and being uh, inspired by all of the different uh, pastimes and instructions in the Shastra, it's very varied, uh, is really essential. Prabhupada wanted that. And that's how we can take shelter of these uh, vani, the, the words. Uh, yeah, this this became very uh, prominent. This Vani and Vapo, as you know, in the last year, last months, in the '77, when Prabhupada was getting ready to depart, and devotees who had depended, we depended on Prabhupada's presence, even though we would rarely see him, but the letters were always out there, you know, and you could always get news what he was saying, what he was doing, you know, and then, uh, you know, then when that time approached, you know, he made it very clear. Well, this is how you can still have my association. I put everything into my books. I'm there. You, if you want to know me, read my books. So many ways, and and uh, it's a fact, you know. That that uh, I mean, this is my little realization after all these years of working on the words of Prabhupada. That it's just that's how I feel associated with Prabhupada, you know, and bringing the words out so it's easier to understand. And that's my little service, but it has no meaning unless there's people who are ready to actually give out the books and you know teach so it's it's uh it's it's an unending project as you can see the need for it what what's what's happening today uh is bec because of the of, of the internet which is now down notice how how peaceful it is 
you know, fewer distractions. <laughs> like, imagine if it was that way all the time. You know, if you really wanted to know something, you had to go and talk to somebody. Um, but there are, there are vast reservoirs of misinformation, disinformation, that are, uh, ignorance, that are being propagated, and people take shelter of that. They won't hear anything else. And so, aside from the, from, from the universal illusion of thinking you're your body and being on the on in modes of nature, you have, you know, uh, uh, illusory things that are, ideas and, and, and uh, causes that are being propagated that lead people to, you know, even kill others. And it's the right thing to do. As I understand, they're my enemy. You know, I understand from reading this site. And all that. It's a disaster. It's another disaster. And what's the only solution? What we're studying every day. The, the absolute truth. The, the, you know, the lowercase absolute truth about the well, higher case absolute truth. Absolute truth is a, is a word for Bhagavan. You probably gave it, you know. But we need true information about that, you know, undistorted. Otherwise, you, you get discussed. So that's what we have. Prabhupada gave us the absolute truth about the absolute truth. And uh, this is our job to uh, learn it, live it, and give it. I'm not, uh, that learn it part has to be there too. <laughs> Learn it, live it, and give it. Okay, any discussion on this point? These uh, points we made. Being now alone and a widow in that forest, the daughter of Adarba began to lament, incessantly shedding tears which soaked her breasts and crying very loudly. Bani and Bapu. In other words, you're talking to somebody, you know, trying to give them a book. Get it. And live it and give it, but I think that there's, there's, a, there's a step missing there. <laughs> For the devotees, you know, learn it, Bhagavad Gita. Learn it, live it, give it. <laughs> understand it. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's a book distribution thing. Yes. Get it here, yeah, take it. Anyway, it's. It, just live it, you know, that live to give thing is great. Live to give. That's the mood of the uh, real Vaishnav. Okay. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Hari Bo.